welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring, where we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated. Today, I'm so excited to have Kevin Beeman from Mecca Fitness and Nutrition, as well as CrossFit Mount Lebanon on the podcast. He is an incredible leader in the fitness industry space. When you think about fitness entrepreneurs who've built diversified revenue streams, he is the first person that comes to my mind. Starting as a CrossFit gym, then expanding to over dozens of different types of classes. He is not only a leader in the industry, but he is also a leader within his staff. Three years ago, he realized that he wanted to offer nutrition services beyond your standard challenge. He signed up for HSN Mentoring and went through the initial training with his nutrition coach, Jen. Today, they have a team of over five people with one more in the works going through the training as the nutrition coach divas. His team, his nutrition team, has been helping so many people in the greater Pittsburgh area. Listen to this podcast and hear his story, and most importantly, how he has been able to scale his business by empowering his staff. Enjoy. Welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. Today, we have Kevin Beeman on the call. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on. I know you're a super busy guy. Hmm. Well, not too busy for you, Nicole. Come on. <laughs> you're too sweet. Well, you own a gym that has so many different pieces of the puzzle within that gym. Technically, is it two separate businesses, Mecca and then CrossFit Mount Lebanon, or all under the Mecca empire? Well, yeah. I mean, originally we were CrossFit Mount Lebanon. We started in 2013 as your typical, uh, if you build it, they will come model back in uh, 2013 when the games were hot and Mm -hmm. uh, Froning was winning everything. And all you had to do is open up your garage door and people came in. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, So back in 2013, we had, uh, it was probably, you know, a 10,000 foot square foot gym, uh, which was kind of large for the area. And then we had two years later, uh, an opportunity to take on 10,000 more, uh, square feet of room. And I knew just doubling our size and doubling our rent was not going to double our membership. You know, I saw a lot of people who came in, joined for two or three months and it just wasn't for them. Uh, or people I would talk to in the community and I, they say, Oh, you're the CrossFit guy. Um, well, I'm never going to do that. And and there was really a lot I could do to change their mind. You know, you want to um, give people little morsels all the time. So uh, I started visiting uh, bigger cities like New York and Miami uh, to see what was going on in fitness. And, and back then in 2012, 2013, the boutique fitness um, industry started and it was pay as you go, you know, $20 a class, $22 a class. And that was really growing in New York. Uh, things like Barry's boot camp and um, yoga classes and hit classes. But I noticed that all the footprints of the studios were very, very small because, of course, in New York City, rents are super high. Yes. So we had this opportunity to take a, over 10,000 square feet uh, and create our own brand that had maybe multiple domains of fitness in underneath underneath one roof. And then you could have one membership, but decide to go to a cycle class on a Monday, a treadmill class on a Tuesday, and maybe a boot camp class on a Wednesday. Um, and of course, it didn't start as robust as that. We grew it. Uh, but that was the overall driving vision and concept is to bring multiple domains under one roof, keeping that CrossFit kind of uh, – modality and training throughout all these classes, but disguising CrossFit in a way that we could bring in a different realm of people and keep them. So we found that to be very successful very, very quickly. So that was in like 2014, you decided, okay, we're going to branch out from CrossFit to offer another type of fitness. What was the first type of class that you brought in? Um, we started, uh, so we actually like kind of tested this and we started a six week boot camp, which okay. was, um, you know, we had a very specific time domain where, you know, the class, we had three classes a day, one in the early morning and 1115 and then the evening class. And we were going to have, I believe 15 people max in each okay. class. And we were going to only do that for six weeks to see what happened. Okay. And we, we sold out every single seat. Wow. Um, and we were happy about that. And after the six weeks, we were like, okay, we'll decide 
uh, what we want to do. And, uh, you know, some people from that 45 group of, uh, of uh, enrollees switched over to CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Some people didn't, but immediately they wanted to start another six weeks. So it wasn't like, okay, we'll try this again in a month. So we, you know, actually had people on a wait list for the second six weeks. And again, we would lose people to CrossFit and I, qu- I put air quotes lose, but they, they wanted more, right? So they wanted to pick up a barbell and, and, and whatnot. So then people started getting really, really mad when we had that one week break. So we knew that this is something that we needed to have as a full-time membership Got it. in our gym. So it was still called like boot camp at CrossFit Mile Lebanon. And that was kind of the tester. And then we started doing rowing classes. Okay. Uh, we called that row fit. So okay. we have, you know, I think our gym now has uh, 37 Concept 2 rowers. Wow. And, okay. Uh, so when they're not being used, obviously they're not being used all the time. Mm-hmm. We we made a class out of that. Uh, some of it is rowing technique. Some of it is row only. Some of it is rowing with um, cr- CrossFit elements. So that awesome. was our second class. And then uh, we added a cycle class, uh, which was a little more uh, capital than just using the rowers that we had. So that was our first big investment, 30 cycle bikes. Uh, and, and yeah, um, and that was part of our expansion. So we really had to create our new brand, which is Mecca Fitness, open up a lobby and have a front desk and a sales staff and, uh, you know, laundry, <laughs> bath, <the> better bathrooms, <laughs> all the things that you, you know, you don't, um, I don't want to say typically have at least back in that day that you would see in a CrossFit gym, someone, you know, that could give you a tour at any time, someone that could check on your account, um, billing issues, a friendly face at the front desk. And then we started selling more, uh, beverages and, and, uh, uh, items in retail. So it really was able to create, uh, many, many different re- revenue streams from expanding the program. Which so is uh, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Which brought us to, you know, how do we add even more value to the customers that are coming in? Uh, and um, I'm sure you, you'll you probably want to talk about the, how we came up with creating a nutrition a revenue stream as well. Absolutely. We'll dive into that in just a few minutes. I want to backtrack for one second. As you guys added more classes, I see a lot of gyms, you know, who are looking to add boot camps and they'll start off as like a six week program trial. So you're not committing for a lifetime of that, like a six week yeah. trial period, boot camp, whatever specialty class. And then how popular is it? Can we keep going with that? Is that how you did it with all of the programs as you added them or just kind of the boot camp? <clears throat> That was just the boot camp because, uh, yeah, and, and the reason why we did that is we wanted to see initially we didn't want to commit to something internally. It wasn't about the customers. It was about us. Do we want this program here? Can we handle um, bringing a, just as much quality to our boot camp program as we did to the um, CrossFit program? And, and to be honest with the, the, the cla- you want to make the classes just as intense. I mean, you don't want to have this kind of like CrossFit light mentality or whatever other domain you bring in. It doesn't need or want, you don't need it to be something that is easier or um, less grueling than a CrossFit class, but you want to make it so it's less, uh, it's more attractive. It's more. It's less intimidating. Uh, yeah, less intimidating. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is the old. Uh, debate in CrossFit is do you have, you know, on your marketing, do you put someone dying, uh, do <laughs> overhead squats, you know, with all the equipment on, or do you want to show someone giving someone a fist bump and a smile? And, and that's really, you know, the marketing, uh, if you're interested in, in growing your programs and bringing more, a diverse group of people in, you want to think about marketing it to those people, not to the people who you think should be in your gym. A hundred percent. I mean, if you look at our website or any of the media that we put out, it's normal human beings. It's very rare that we're putting someone with a eight pack on a picture just because that's people that are normal are not going to think that they can do it if all you're showing is people with six packs, right? And I'm sure you you realize that super early on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that six weeks was our kind of like, can we do this? And we, we, you know, knew right away, like, this is going to be something that we're going to repeat. 
And then the customers really were the ones saying, no, don't take a week off. Once we created that brand, that Mecca Fitness brand that was separate from CrossFit, yep. we really ran the business as two separate businesses. Um, a lot of times people didn't realize that it was uh, uh, you know, owned by the same group of people. And uh, that, that's the way it, it lasted for a long time. But we found that a lot of our CrossFit athletes wanted to do Mecca. You know, they wanted the classes, but they didn't want to leave CrossFit. Absolutely. So we created, yeah, we created like a bridge membership where you could do both. You needed to have a CrossFit membership to do that. You couldn't do that if you were at Mecca. You couldn't just pop into a CrossFit class mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Um, but once we saw that that interaction between the two brands, um, it kind of lit something in us that we said, like, maybe we should just have one brand and have CrossFit be a membership underneath the Mecca brand. I mean, obviously CrossFit Mount Lebanon keeps its brand and that's an, a, the affiliate and it's mm -hmm. a very important, it's very important um, to HQ that we keep that separate, but it's no different than um, we have the treadmill class, we have yoga class, we have CrossFit class, that type of thing. Now you have to have a special membership to get into CrossFit, um, but we're, we're building our brand under our own name, which is Mecca Fitness. You know, um, it just makes more sense for us as we, as we grow as a company. It makes complete sense. You know, one thing that you mentioned, and this is something that we've been talking about a ton is essentially what you were saying, you know, bridge the gap, being able to have people go to CrossFit Mount Lebanon and other classes. You're talking about hybrid memberships. You're talking about yeah, absolutely. making it easy for someone to be able to go to both or any type of fitness. And we have members at our gym that go to Orange Theory, right? And if we offered more of a cardio class, I'm sure they wouldn't go there. They would just continue to come to us and just be a part of our membership. And it, it just makes so much sense, right? Like people want a variety of different things. Some You have endurance athletes that are part of your CrossFit gym. And if you offered endurance specific classes, I'm sure they would go to those too. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, CrossFit is very much, you know, uh, trust the program, right? Mm -hmm. You want to trust the program. You want to trust your, uh, your coach or your, uh, programming, whoever's in charge of programming to say, okay, I don't like this workout, but I'm going to show up yep. because I trust this program and I want to be, uh, you know, really good at all these things. Absolutely. Well, not everybody wants, wants that they want to go to a CrossFit class and maybe do the deadlifts and, and some pull-ups and, and, and this thing. But when they see like maybe a seven minute workout and you know, that they're like, I don't, I don't have, I have an hour to work out and I want to burn the most amount of calories I can. So today I'm choosing not to go to CrossFit. Now that doesn't mean that's the right decision in bigger picture, but that's what they want. Yeah, you exactly. know, they, they want to sweat that day. They exactly. want to work for 45 minutes. They don't want to work for seven minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. so we're offering different op opportunities and choices for our, you know, 750 monthly members. So Wow, 750, just a few. Um, okay, so you obviously have a wide variety of CrossFit or fitness classes, including CrossFit. Then we had a conversation a couple years ago and you said, I want to now build nutrition. So how did you guys start nutrition? What prompted you to say we need to branch out beyond fitness to nutrition? Sure. Well, we had been doing um, a, a couple different things over the years, like Lurong Living Challenge. We've done mm -hmm. a few a few nutrition off brand things. We've done Whole Life, and we got a ton of people that were really interested uh, in in doing that every six months or so. That we would introduce that Lurong, which I think was great. It really focused on winning prizes if you it almost felt at the end like it was another open workout so they would announce these wor workouts and um people would get sent you know a pair of jeans or whatever uh and then there was a there was an eating guide um but what we found that people really didn't see results and for us it didn't really create a reoccurring revenue model so we were taking away uh, staff to run these programs and they weren't getting any more education other than what whoever was the sponsor of the program was sending us. Um, so it was like, here's the meal plan, read it to the people, have a meeting. Um, but, but primarily people weren't really weren't seeing like these, you know, great results. And at, at the end of the six weeks, it was over uh, and they'd be waiting uh, for the next challenge to, 
to be part of something again. So Mm -hmm. we were really, I was really looking for something either internally where we could hire a a nutritionist or a dietitian to be our in-house person. Um, But, uh, you know, I I just couldn't find the right fit. And uh, I I got introduced to you and it was very interesting to me that it was an affiliate program where you were helping people build a new revenue stream. And at the same time, educating them and giving them new, new resources all the time. And I love the fact that it was a reoccurring revenue stream. So, you know, there was an initial um, fee f- to come in and, and assess what's going on. Uh, you really focused on, you know, the results that you would get from something like an in-body scan and then giving people goals and then, you know, charging them to come back and uh, create a relationship with a coach and, and pay for that every month. Absolutely. So that, so that helps us with building, you know, a gradually increasing revenue stream. And it also builds opportunity for a coaching staff to build their own side business, which I thought was great. Yes. I remember the first conversation we had and you said, would you fly up and do the training in person? <laughs> and I think yeah. you were the <laughs> only one to ever ask me that. I'm like, well, we could probably make that work, but you, you guys have done a done such a great job building nutrition into your brand. I mean, it, you guys are known as the experts in nutrition in the area and you started off with one coach and I can't remember how many new, you guys started off with a challenge standard, kick yeah. it off with a challenge. Mm-hmm. I remember Jen talking to me, you guys had like quite a few people. I don't, it was closer to I, the yeah, hundred mark. We- yeah, I might have been 125, 130 people that signed up for the, I think it was a six week, initial six week challenge. Yeah. So Jen was pretty busy because she converted quite a few of those people to ongoing coaching. So it almost was immediate that her like staff was, or her schedule was booked with. Yeah, absolutely. Ongoing we did the, yeah, we did the initial um, uh, meeting for everyone with the PowerPoint together, Jen and I. And then from there, she was booked with, you know, after the six weeks was up, she had clients out the wazoo. And immediately we knew that if we wanted to continue being able to service our community, we needed to hire some more people. And hence the nutrition divas. So we <laughs> yes, the nutrition divas. Yes. So now after Jen goes through the training, you guys ended up bringing on two more people. And Jen kind of oversaw them and they went through the training process, our training process, and Jen kind of guided them so that they could take on their own clients, right? That's exactly how it happened. Yep. So Jen is kind of runs the show and, you know, going into as you've built this nutrition program, you've also built the staff to support it. I mean, how many nutrition clients or coaches do you have right now? So right now we have five total and we have a six that is going through training. Wow. So, I mean, it's definitely a whole another revenue stream for you guys and you're able to service quite a few people maybe that aren't even members at your facility at this point with nutrition. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have, uh, it's probably 50-50. 50% probably are people that go to our gym and the other 50% are a mix of people that go to other gyms, other CrossFit gyms or other fitness facilities Um, and then also people who don't work out at all, you know, they've been referred to us by someone who says, you know, wow, you look great. What, how, what happened to you? And then they'll say, well, I, it's, you know, body by Ireland or body (laughs) by Trish or, you know, um, so they, they refer our coaches and say like, you really need to talk to April or Sarah or whoever they feel comfortable with. So it's not just about, the people that come into our four walls, it's, it's getting the message out, uh, not only through our social media and newsletters and all that stuff, but also, um, through the people that have had success, uh, with our coaches. I mean, you've really done the girls, the girls have done a great job building nutrition into the brand and yeah, absolutely, you know, going into building this amazing team and you have so many different pieces of the puzzle within the business. Like, let's talk about it. How do you manage all of, how many staff do you guys have all together at Mecca Fitness? Um, so we have eight full-time people that include myself. That's okay. our management team. And then geez, probably another 45 part-time people. 
Holy mackerel. I would say yeah. definitely one of the largest gyms running our program for sure. Definitely one of the largest CrossFit gym, mm-hmm. <laughs> gyms in the in the U.S., I would imagine. Uh, how are you able to manage all of those people? Like all these different pieces of the puzzle, the boot camp, the rowing, the nutrition, CrossFit. Like how – as an yeah. owner, how are you able to do it? Well, I mean it didn't happen overnight. So this was all small gradual changes and that and that's kind of a switch where we are right now, which I'll get to later. But the the initial kind of, you know, light bulb moment was for me realizing I needed to get out of my own way and I needed to focus on the things that were really important about building the business that I wanted to build. So it's having that vision, believing in myself that I can lead a group of people to that instead of dragging the business to where I wanted to go and having so much friction that that was never going to happen. So I read a book called uh, Traction. Yes. um, Yes. (laughs) I love traction. Uh, It's like getting a grip on your business. It's by this guy named Gino Wickman and it's really a roadmap, uh, to where you want to go. And it doesn't specifically tell you uh, what you should do, but it gives you um, an outline of the things that you need to do to find out what's important. And, you know, I, I, I quickly realized that my role um, is more of a visionary and that's what I'm good at. I'm good at looking at the big picture, looking at culture, looking at client and employee relationships and, and how those things all interact. And if you don't have someone doing that, uh, you know, steering the ship, it's just, you're, you're just going to go in circles. So, you know, we have my role, which is visionary. We have implementer, which is the person who, after we as a group came together and said, here's our core values, here's how we're going to get there. Here's our goals in 10 years. Um, here's our, you know, how we're going to treat people and how we're going to run a meeting and how often we're going to have that meeting. Um, we have someone who's an implementer who actually makes us stick to those things. I'm not that person. I'll be like, okay, <laughs> meeting's over. Can we just cancel this week? Or I'm not going to be there. So, so this person and, and in this role, uh, we have Natalie doing that. She is someone who is very meticulous and a spreadsheet person and someone who uh, doesn't cut corners and, you know, isn't someone who is like me or anybody else on the team. And we need her. We need her to keep us on, on, on track. I'm not someone who as a visionary, I'm just not someone who wants to sit there in a meeting and talk about the things that we, we need to talk about every week. Um, you know, we created an organizational chart, um, who reports to who and why. And, um, you know, we, we, we had some problems before that where someone would say, you know, uh, we really don't want you to do it this way. We want you to do it that way. And they'd be like, well, who are you? You're not my boss, you know, or like, why are you saying this to me? So we weren't, it wasn't clear on who was in charge of what. So we, we made an org chart, um, that, you know, is fluid. It changes all the time, but when those changes happen, we make sure everybody knows. So everybody knows who they report to, uh, who's on the management team and and what our focus is couple of things that you said there. Number one, you have meetings regularly. You have meetings with the core team every week. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Every Wednesday at 1230, and it usually lasts about 90 minutes. Okay. And chain of command. So who talks to who? And I think that's a big problem that a lot of gym owners have is because they feel like they're the ones that everyone has to talk to, right? Yeah. And, and in reality, it, it takes – It takes a long time and we're still dealing with that, not as much, but it takes a long time for not only employees, but customers to uh, realize things have changed. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to, they want to talk to the person who they believe is the highest up, Mm -hmm. um, whether that be an employee or a customer. And I, I, I made a conscious decision that I'm not going, even though sometimes I really, really wanted to. I'm not going to get involved with customer issues, with um, things that come up or, or problems that I think I could solve very quickly. I want to let other people do that so they can, you know, maybe not make huge mistakes, but they can figure it out on their own or come to me and say, here's what happened. What, what do you think we should do? And let them handle it. So getting, getting, taking myself out of the equation there is very, very hard. When you're running your own small business, it's, it's you, right? It's your business. You want to make sure that everything's going the way you want it to. But if you, if you want your business to grow, you have to let other people solve problems and feel good about that and maybe make some mistakes here and there. But 
is, is letting that happen is a hard, hard process to do. But you, if, if you're a real entrepreneur, you have to, you have to get out of the way. That is probably the most important piece of information that you can give any entrepreneur. I mean, there's only so many hours in the day. There's only so many things that you can actually handle. And if you're focusing in your business every single day, there's no way you're going to be able to scale and grow. You guys would not mm-hmm. be here today if you were handing every single client issue. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about your nutrition program. You have almost six people now go mm-hmm. that are nutrition coaches. You are not super hands-on with the program. No, I did go through the program. Of I course. actually um, uh, went through it with Jen, and I, I, I really don't know if I could do it again because uh, <laughs> from what I understand, it's way different from uh, when I first did it two or three years ago, um, which is, uh, you know, uh, a testament to how you guys have grown, you know? Um, so yeah, I went through it and we did that initial first challenge. Jen took over. Um, she started, we started looking at, you know, people, uh, who we felt could make good coaches and we were lucky enough to find people internally, right? People that were either coaches or people that, uh, you know, when I say coaches, CrossFit coaches or fitness coaches at the gym, and then also people that we felt were inspiring and also had our perspective that they could show that would be helpful to growing our program. So yeah, we've been really happy. What made you, I think this is a conversation that I like to have with all gym owners that have built amazing teams with nutrition coaches. What are things that you look for uh, when you are bringing on a new nutrition coach? And I assume you, you have someone, Jen, who runs the Mm -hmm. show now with, you know, talking about chain of command. She's the champion of your nutrition program. She, I assume would be involved with the interview process, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the Jen and the four other coaches that we have now, uh, all were people that we knew, people that, um, you know, besides Trish, everyone already in some capacity worked for us. April was our general manager, and uh, she has, you know, over 20 years of experience in fitness and, and nutrition. Um, and she was an easy fit there because she had started to really get a handle on how things were working at the gym. And she had the time and she had all these great relationships already in the gym of people that looked up to her as, um, uh, uh, an expert, right? So she was a, a natural fit. Sarah uh, was our uh, part-time marketing manager at the time. So she handled all of our Instagram, all of our newsletters on a very part-time basis. We then were able to hire Sarah as a full-time marketing person. And I know that's difficult for some gyms to do because when you think about adding full-time salary for someone that isn't revenue driving, you know, marketing is very much um, part of revenue driving. It's part of the sales process, but it's it's not something where most gyms can say, let's hire a full-time person <laughs> that gets, you know, benefits and 401k. I mean, that's a, that's a big jump. But we were able to do that because she was already uh, had some level of success being a nutrition coach. So if she had a little more time to put into that, instead of going to a nine to five job, she could see her revenue grow exponentially plus her full-time salary that we were offering her. So that was like a double whammy for us. We got a great coach. We were able to hire her full-time and she felt more comfortable in making that jump to being a full-time staff member and part of our management team at Mecca. Um, Susie was already a, a coach, uh, f- for CrossFit. She was actually our third, second or third employee and everybody knew Susie. She's a hard worker, super strong. And she had her own struggles and huge successes and wins in nutrition before she joined our team. So she had this real, um, sincere empathy for people that couldn't figure out the easy tricks to be successful. Which and, is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's not easy until it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's simple, not easy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and finally, Trish, um, she was a client of ours for years, and um, much like Susie, like within like six or eight weeks, you know, she was walking around, and people were like, "What happened to you?" I mean, she just <laughs> became the person she wanted to be through eating right, and she figured that out through another system, but she is able to really, really look at the client and say, I know what you're going through, Mm -hmm. you know, 
And here's how I did it. And here's some tools to help you. Here's some simple tricks. And don't get you know caught in the minutia of I'm not this or that. Just focus on the small, small goal. And that's how she became successful. And um, she's, you know, she's one of our um, most revered coaches because um, because of that fact. That's amazing. So let's dive into you have these amazing coaches. One of them started as a client. The rest were on staff. Did you guys approach people? Did you just put a feeler out? Hey, we're look our nutrition team's expanding. How did how did that start? Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I'll, I'll just talk about Trish because the other three were on staff, and you know, I had a relationship with them professionally, and it seemed like a good a good fit, and you know, took took a while to kind of put that notion in their ear or that they came to us and said, I, I want to be part of this. Mm-hmm. But with Trish, I just kind of, you know, mentioned it to her and, and didn't really say, Hey, would you like a job? I just said, you know, we have this program. I think you've heard of it. Jen's running it. And I don't want you to give me an answer, but I just think you'd be really good at this. And, um, you know, I think a week or two later, she was like, tell me more about this, you know, just put and, the bug in one, her ear. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And at one point, uh, Trish was like, we were worried because <laughs> she had so many clients and she worked a full-time job and she was still making time for the gym and it just got to be too much. And that's kind of our, um, steps to ha- when we know, you know, like they can't take any more clients or their, their office hours are, are always jammed. That's the time that we know that we need to hire someone else. And the hiring process for hiring a new coach, uh, we definitely help with that, but what, what do you guys do on your end? Well, we, to be honest with you, we just really haven't had that problem because internally we were able to hire people. And the sixth coach that we just hired um, is someone that I knew personally that was interested in joining the team and had a nutrition background in college. Um, and, you know, I introduced her to Jen and I said, you know, you don't have to hire this person. This is totally up to you. It's just a recommendation. And I left it in Jen's hands. So I, again, I just got out of the way. And that's the biggest thing, right? Like Jen runs the show. They go through our training process and then Jen mentors them and guides them so that they are eventually off on their own, seeing their own clients. Absolutely. I mean, Jen, Jen does do that. Uh, but I will have to say it's a team effort. Uh, you know, they're, they're shadowing clients, uh, with, uh, Susie and April and Sarah and mm-hmm. Trish, just Jen, because we, you know, we have a very uniform way of presenting these solutions to people. Now everyone does it in their own personality in their own way, but the process is, you know, what we learned from healthy steps nutrition is it's, it's the way we do it. So we want, we want our new coaches to see that it's very similar in every appointment, you know, the, the structure is the same. Now the words and the, and the, um, the feeling of the, of the initial meeting or the ongoing meeting may be completely different from one client to the next, because the coach is different. And obviously the clients all have their own stories and sometimes there's tears and sometimes there's hugs and sometimes there's none of that. It's, it's, you know, the outline of how things progress and how you get someone from A to B is pretty much the same. And I think that's a big mistake that I see a lot of gyms who have multiple nutrition coaches make is it's very different. And then people are starting to question, which nutrition coach should I go to? Which one's better? Which program's better? You offer different types of nutrition. It's just confusing to everyone. So I love the idea of you guys having new people on coming on board, shadowing different coaches. I think it it kind of reminds me of a CrossFit class, right? Like when we hire a new coach, we have them shadow multiple different coaches because everyone has different cues and we could all learn from different nutrition coaches, but the class structure is always going to be the same, right? So it's going to, the client experience is always going to be the same. The client contact is always going to be the same. It's just the cues and the verbs, you know, the words in talking with clients that, that would be different. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just really important, just like when you hire for a CrossFit coach or a fitness coach that, um, the resume doesn't, um, outweigh the person, you know? Mm -hmm. So we've had people that have said to us, Oh, I'm, I'm interested in being a nutrition coach for you. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a nurse. I'm this, I'm that. And although 
you know, I'm not discounting any of those things. It's very important for us that we keep a uniform way we do things. It is proven. This pro- this program is proven. It works. And that's what we want to focus on, the guts of it. And uh, we need to continue looking for people that um, can empathize, uh, know what it's like, can follow um, follow a pattern of of wins and get people to where they need to be. It doesn't necessarily uh, need to be someone who is overqualified. A hundred percent agree. I mean, going back to what we were talking about originally with having a reoccurring revenue stream is not because someone has RD credentials. It's because they've built a relationship with a client. A hundred percent. And all of your coaches have done an amazing job building relationships with their nutrition clients, which is why you have such a high reoccurring membership base for nutrition coaching. And even more importantly, that 50% of your your clients are nutrition-only clients because everyone's so happy with the program. They're referring their non-gym member friends to come to see the Nutrition Divas. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's really important, too, that on a logistic side is that you create a space that is conducive to this. So um, we have uh, a separate office and we've decorated that office so it feels like a living room. The in-body scanner is in there. Um, but we're also uh, on our way in, in mid-construction for our second location. And we're lucky in the fact that we can design a space that works with our growing nutrition staff and customers. So we've created kind of like a Jack and Jill uh, nutrition office where there's two offices and in between each one of those offices is almost like a Jack and Jill bathroom, but there's no bathroom in there. It's just the in-body scanner. So we don't have to have, yeah, we don't have to have two scanners. Uh, You know, you slide the door open and then your client get on there with some privacy and then come back into the other room and then vice, vice versa. So we could actually have two appointments going on at the same time uh, with one scanner Uh, and then creating like a comfortable environment. Right. So um, co- the coaches are, are obviously the most important thing, the program, but also creating an environment and spending a little bit of, of uh, capital on a, a separate space that you, can, that you can have these meetings and create a relationship. You want your clients to feel comfortable, right? And I remember starting my practice, gosh, 10 years ago when I was doing measurements in like a bathroom, right? Because I didn't want people to yeah. mm-hmm. like be in the middle of the open space. It wasn't ideal. We, as soon as I was able to get office, I got an office, but I love the idea of having a Jack and Jill style. We're actually in the process of getting a bigger space and I'm going to a hundred percent take that idea from you. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. But you know, I said earlier, like a lot of times there's tears and there's, you know, people are not talking about what they're putting you know, what they're eating so much as they're talking about their life and mm-hmm. trauma and, and things that, um, you know, they, they sign up for it. They don't think they're getting a private therapy session, but it kind of turns into that. So if you don't Absolutely. create an environment that's conducive to that, that's private and warm, you're not going to have real change. A hundred percent agree. Kevin, you are such a plethora of knowledge. What is one piece of advice that you give gym owners who are looking to start a nutrition program or looking to bring on a nutrition coach, what's one piece of advice that you will give them? Well, I mean, if you're going to do anything, you have to, you have to put a hundred percent into it, right? So if you think you're going to, um, you know, do your books and do your marketing and coach your classes and, um, clean the bathrooms and then 10 minutes later, take a nutrition client, you're really not going to be, um, successful, you know, I think it's great that you're going to educate yourself and you want to do all these things. But I say, I guess I would have to say is like, just get your shit together first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Realize that you need a roadmap. You need to have a vision of what you want your business to do. And if you just say, I want, oh, I, you know, I listened to this podcast and I want to create that revenue stream. It's not going to happen. You have to organize yourself and organize your business and get the right team and, once you do all those things, then you should call Nicole and say, I'm ready to um, go through the program myself, find the right person to go through with me, and then put that person in charge. And I'm going to focus on the things that matter. I love it. I love it. Thanks for the non-paid plug. <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> um, again, Kevin, you guys have done such an amazing job. I 
consider your team as the leaders with building a team. And Jen has done such an amazing job building your nutrition program and having a group of people that are, are all like-minded with the same vision of helping each other make your community a happier and healthier place. And you guys, again, are are doing an amazing job. Thank you for trusting us to help you build your nutrition program. And I'm so excited to watch you guys continue to build it in the future and continue to build corporate and venture out so that you guys aren't just doing it in-house. You're going out in your community and building an even bigger nutrition program. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even have time to talk about that as the corporate wellness part of it is almost like a secondary program to what you guys are offering. You know, we, we have really created a whole new revenue stream with corporate wellness. And then it, you know, one hand scratches the other. We go into these companies and, you know, we're giving a seminar to 80 people that have never heard of Mecca Fitness. And all of a sudden, you know, they're coming in to take classes or doing personal training. And um, maybe they're not a nutrition client in, in, a, in a typical way, but we're able to market ourselves so much broader with with the corporate wellness arm. So thank you for helping us create that. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. It, that's the goal, right? We just want the community to be a healthier place. And you're, you're right. It says one side does scratch the other side. I mean, you set up partnerships with companies and now you have additional members at your facility or family members who now are bringing in their daughter, son, spouse to help you for you guys to help them with nutrition, right? Absolutely. It's been great. And we're really, really looking forward to expanding that. So we've had some great big successes in it and some smaller things. And we, and we really see that the, the market for that is wide open for us. We just, you just have to spend the time in creating a process to get more customers because those customers just don't come right to your door. You have to go find them. Absolutely. And it's, you know, you, you have a wide range of success stories and people that are bought into and know the, the amazing impact of your nutrition program. And can they introduce you to one person? And now you have hundreds of people, right? <laughs> that, Absolutely. you know, of contacts that you guys can build those relationships with. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You guys are doing such an amazing job and I'm, I'm proud to be able to help you guys with your nutrition program. Anything else you want to add before we close? No, just, I appreciate the, uh, the invite and, um, you know, you don't realize that y you yourself are creating this process, uh, and this team of people really branches out to so many roots and, and these small gyms that, that open up. Um, so, I mean, your impact is, is phenomenal. So I, I thank you for that. Thank you for the kind words. All right. Well, if anyone has any questions, I'm going to link the book traction under this because I think this is a great resource for people. And I'll put another, a few other links and definitely some links to your website so people can go check out all the awesome things you guys are doing at Mecca Fitness. And if you're ever in the area, just stop by. I'm, I think I need to come up to your area and Good. we'd love to have you <laughs> and test out and just, you know, take a tour. I think, you know, one of the things that we talked about before coming on the podcast was you venture out and go drop into other gyms all the time to learn what other people are doing. And I think that's, that's a great leadership quality is you have to look at what everyone else is doing and always strive to be better. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, 90% of the stuff is stolen and then reimagined for, uh, what I think we can do better and, you know, taking really good ideas and making them great. Um, and that's, you know, different for everyone, right? So, uh, there's millions of ways to cook up fitness and nutrition and health and keeping yourself in a small bubble. You're never going to really, um, grow. So, um, every, everybody's stealing from everyone, right. Or inspired by everyone. So maybe that's a different way, uh, a better way to put it inspiration rather than theft. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, isn't that the goal of a visionary person? That's, that's your role. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Take care. I hope you enjoyed that podcast episode as much as I did. I think one of the hardest things to do is to delegate and empower your management staff to make key decisions because you feel like you have to make them all, when in reality you don't. One of the most important things Kevin said on this episode was you really just need to get out of your own way. 
think it's important that you are involved at the beginning, but the real goal is to empower someone else to build a business under your brand. And that's exactly what he's done. If you are thinking, I'm ready to add an additional revenue stream and add a nutrition program, we want to help. The first thing you need to do is identify who would be a good fit to help you run the program. As a gym owner, you can only wear so many hats. So by identifying a nutrition coach that help you run the program, that's really how you're going to be able to scale it. After you find that person, book a free call at growyournutritionbusiness.com. We want to learn more about you and ensure that HSN Mentoring is a good fit to help you build a nutrition program that you're dreaming of. So book that call today.